<laughs> My God. Project Shadow. A secret research facility. It was a black site, sir. Someone worked very hard to keep this hidden. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. They dropped a brand new Sonic 3 trailer. When they released it, there was also a bunch of news about returning characters from the previous movies, villains, totally new characters from the lore in the games. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. Super Bowl trailers in the next week is going to be crazy. Like Deadpool 3 trailer is going to break the internet. Very timely because Shadow is the main character in this next big movie. There were a bunch of people that actually just released their own Shadow fan film, which is really, really good. Generally, the Sonic movies have done a good job of breaking the curse of video game movies. Like, they've actually been pretty solid. Most of the fandom is actually pretty happy with what they've been delivering. So very optimistic that Sonic 3 will also continue in that trend. But the new teaser trailer starts with Sonic beginning his classic spin attack from the movies and the games with the camera following his body as it spins. Then it switches to the black and red version of Sonic with the red lightning. It's meant to be Shadow the Hedgehog, his sometimes evil clone. Sometimes he helps him. Their relationship is basically like another version of Sonic and Knuckles from Sonic 2. So we start a new order, the three of us. We must make a vow to use our powers to keep the universe safe, our new tribe. Knuckles started out by fighting against Sonic, then eventually they started working together against Robotnik or Eggman, however you want to call him, and it'll probably be the same arc for Shadow the Hedgehog during Sonic 3 when Shadow learns why he was created in the first place, like what his true purpose was. But the trailer depicts both of them using their spin attacks against each other, just spinning around the logo, charging up, and the laugh you hear at the end of the trailer is meant to be Jim Carrey's Robotnik. <laughs> He's returned as Eggman. There were a lot of people that thought that the laugh could be coming from Hayden Christensen because there's rumors that he's doing the voice of Shadow in the movie. I know a lot of people would love to see Hayden Christensen come back during this. But when they released the teaser trailer, the people behind the movie released a bunch of articles confirming that Jim Carrey had returned from his brief retirement to play Robotnik again. It's not big enough as far as I'm concerned. Not only is he going to be manic, have these great looks, but we've designed a ton of new drones for him. And the other fantastic thing we're so excited to be able to bring to the screen is his Eggmobile, his flying ship that's iconic from the game. The only reason people thought that he was done for good was because he said he would retire from acting after Sonic 2, but this was when Sonic 2 was coming out in theaters. He said unless the greatest script in movie history came to him, so apparently Sonic 3 is either going to be the best movie of all time, like just the biggest banger, or they offered him more money than he's ever going to be able to spend. Typically, it's the money reason. The way they ended Sonic 2, they did leave a back door for him possibly returning. Like, I think they weren't quite sure if Jim Carrey would want to return. So they're like, we just need to give him an ending that would allow them to explain why he either does not come back or why he does come back. So at the end of Sonic 2, none of the authorities or the military, the federal government ever found his body. Robotnik had created this giant robot, split the Master Emerald into the seven Chaos Emeralds. They used those to turn Sonic into his super Sonic form, who destroys the robot, but they never show you what happened to Robotnik's body after the robot crashed to the ground. Agent, I want an update. Still searching, sir. We haven't found any sign of Robotnik. No one could have survived that crash. What a mess that lunatic made. Later, when the government was combing the wreckage, they just said they couldn't find his body, and Agent Stone sort of sneaks in, wearing a uniform, to reveal that he's still alive, and he'll probably be the one to find and save Robotnik so that he can return to try and finger puppet control Shadow to force him to fight Sonic using all of his own abilities against him. Most of Shadow's abilities are similar to Sonic's abilities, which is why they're using the spin attack against each other in the logo. Pretty much all the big characters are back from Sonic 2. They reference Project Shadow during that teaser at the end. That's right out of the lore of the Sonic games. A file buried deep in our system and dating back over 50 years. A secret research facility. It was a black site, sir. Project Shadow. In the teaser, they say Project Shadow was a relic from 50 years ago, so what they'll probably do is just explain it like they do in the games. It'll have it be Robotnik's grandfather who created Shadow, just like they did in Sonic Adventure 2. Generally, the plot of Sonic 3 will be based on the plot of Sonic Adventure 2. 
In the lore of the games, Shadow was created by Gerald Robotnik, the grandfather of Dr. Robotnik, Jim Carrey's character. They'll probably use the movie to delve more into Robotnik's backstory with his family. Like, you can imagine Jim Carrey getting super ham crazy on all this family relationship. Daddy didn't love me, Grandpa didn't love me kind of stuff. It'll make more sense when you understand why his grandfather created Shadow in the first place. Like, why he would have been preoccupied with his experiments. But the whole idea at the end of the movie is the government found coordinates to Shadow inside Robotnik's robot, so he was already going to get Shadow. That's probably why you see him come out of cryo storage at the end of the movie, like because he'd already activated his cryo tank. They're not really clear why it took him this long to go get Shadow out of storage. He probably didn't think he needed Shadow until the events of the second movie because he only just met Sonic in the first movie, then realized he would have needed Shadow. Like, ah, oh, I'll go get that other experiment my grandfather created. But at the end of the first movie, he got stranded on the other planet and just made it back to planet Earth and then just got the Master Emerald. So, like, this is all happening pretty quickly in the events of the movies. So had he had a little more time, he probably would have gotten Shadow out of storage. In the lore, Shadow was a hybrid clone created from the DNA from Sonic's race and the Black Arms race, who serve as antagonists, just in the general sense of the series. But in present day of the games, most of the Black Arms race has died off, except for Black Doom, who was their leader, and spent all of his time trying to conquer and enslave worlds, including the Earth. So maybe, maybe we get some kind of teaser for Black Doom at the end of this movie, or at least some flashbacks to his race to explain how Shadow can exist when they're sort of discovering Shadow for the first time. The whole reason why Robotnik's grandfather created Shadow and why Robotnik might hate his grandfather or think that his grandfather never cared about him was because he was trying to solve the problem of immortality and cure his granddaughter's fatal disease, Maria Robotnik. So the whole idea is that Shadow wasn't created to be an evil being to conquer anyone or even created to fight Sonic or Sonic's race. It was all about saving his granddaughter, Maria. I believe this actress is playing Maria during the movie, so it's just more of Robotnik's family they're introducing from the lore. And maybe part of Robotnik's arc in the movie is eventually chilling a little bit once he realizes why Shadow was created and what was really going on with his cousin Maria, who is his cousin, it's not his sister. But you can kind of see this from Shadow's perspective too, where Shadow suddenly understands why he was created in the first place. Like, oh, I'm not here to kill Sonic, I'm actually here to help people. And yes, a lot of people do think that Hayden Christensen is voicing the Shadow character. That would be really cool. After he came back as Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker during Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ahsoka, he did say that his desire to do more movies and TV shows had been invigorated. He got new agents, new management, so this could just be a result of all that. Still, still really want to see him do like a live action version of the Clone Wars series, even though that would be the most expensive TV show in the history of TV shows. Kristen Ritter, who most people remember from the Marvel Netflix Defender series from Jessica Jones, she's actually coming back during that too in the new MCU stuff. She's in the movie and most people believe she's playing a version of Rouge the Bat. Just because of all the new characters that they announced that they're doing in the movie, she seems the most similar to the kind of character that Kristen Ritter would actually be playing. In the lore, she was meant to be a jewel thief, as in Chaos Emeralds, the Master Emerald, working for the federal government on Earth. But sometimes she's good, sometimes she's bad. She has a weakness for jewels, so you can see how she just likes stealing stuff. Generally, she's meant to be one of Sonic's allies. Cool Easter egg for the games, too. When they were making Sonic Adventure 2, which is basically informing the plot of the Sonic 3 movie, originally, the developers of the game called her Shadow, and originally, they developed the Shadow character for Sonic Adventure 2, but when they were developing the game, they called him Terios, but then they switched the names, and they started calling the actual Shadow character Shadow, and started calling her Rouge the Bat. Maybe there'll be a couple of jokes about that at some point during the movie. Eventually during the game, she helps Sonic defeat Black Doom, but I'm not expecting Black Doom to be like a real main villain of Sonic 3. I still think that Robotnik is meant to be one of the main villains for most of the film. What they might do after they resolve all the conflicts during the movie is they might tease Black Doom for like a future film if they do a fourth movie. For the most part though, all the big characters from Sonic 2 are back, like Tails, Knuckles, there is that Knuckles TV show that they're making with Idris Elba's version from the movies. We don't have a trailer for that yet, but we'll probably see more characters from the movies also show up during that. They'll also probably use it to introduce more characters from the games too. If there's any other Easter eggs or references that you spotted in any of the teasers that they dropped for Sonic 3, just write them below in the comments, and I'll do more trailer videos as they release them later this year. The movie's not coming out till the end of the year, so it's going to be a while before we get the next big trailer. 
Like I said, next week is the American Super Bowl. If you live outside the United States, it's basically like a trailer fest. So everybody drops their really big trailers. The biggest one is supposed to be the Deadpool 3 trailer, expecting that to break the internet. Of course, I will do videos for as many of them as possible. So be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of that. Speaking of Kristen Ritter, big connection to what's happening with Daredevil Born Again in the Marvel Universe right now. Like all the Marvel Netflix Defenders characters are coming back through Daredevil Born Again eventually including Kristen Ritter as her version of Jessica Jones. Click here for that first teaser trailer for all that stuff and click here for all my Deadpool 3 teaser trailers. There have been a couple of them recently. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.